Hi, everyone. I'm Alolita Sharma from AWS, and I am also an Open Telemetry Governance Committee member. Uh, I will be presenting today on building Prometheus support in Open Telemetry, which has been a great effort uh, in collaboration and um, give you an update on what's, uh, what's in progress. A little bit about myself. I'm a principal technologist at AWS uh, and I lead open source strategy and engineering. I'm also a co-chair of the CNCF technical advisory group for observability. And I have uh, a great um, you know, appreciation for open standards and interoperability. I see Prometheus support in open telemetry as a great opportunity to uh, multiply the usefulness and reach of observability data. And I see the effort that we are making on the open telemetry project to fully support Prometheus as an uh, effort that really will you know, bring a great value to the, both projects as well as to the users who use these. So many of you know already uh, about, open, uh, about observability. And um, as you know, observability brings a deep understanding of the behavior of a system. The best modern solutions today in observability live in open source and open telemetry as well as Prometheus are great examples of such amazing and powerful open source projects. Tracing metrics and logging, as you know, are the core data sig signals in observability and they give the opportunity for the user to be able to use metrics you know, for aggregation, tracing for each request, which is uh, transaction-based as well as logging and events that are collected for telemetry. So observability in Kubernetes is an area that uh, is near and dear to all of our hearts because we have been working in that space and it's something that you know really is important for Kubernetes developers to understand uh, and use telemetry data to understand in, in turn what the behavior of their code is during runtime. And having more observability data, whether that's metrics or traces or logs really helps in the effectiveness of Kubernetes monitoring. So a little bit about um, the architecture of open telemetry, just to set the context for the components that are being uh, enhanced and the overall uh, objective of the project is that open telemetry not only provides an open standard for collection of telemetry and data format uh, in the form of the open telemetry protocol, but also provides open source components such as the collector agent and API and SDK libraries in 11 languages, which provide the ability to um, use um, and, and customize your applications to build <clears throat> in, in different languages and provide and send telemetry data, which can then be processed, analyzed and uh, visualized down the pipeline to better understand what your applications and your infrastructure is functioning uh, as, is it healthy? Is it, uh, does it need provisioning? Or um, is there something that can be done automatically? So uh, open telemetry obviously provides the ability to collect that data and, and process it. And then send that over to a very important, you know, and uh, to to and very important, you know, uh, component which is used for analysis in the Kubernetes space uh, for applications running in the Kubernetes environment. Um, and Prometheus, uh, as many of you know, has been around for a while. It's an open source framework for alerting uh, data store. It's a, also used as a data store for time series data metrics data, and of course, is used for processing and monitoring um, your uh, metrics for telemetry. So Prometheus collects you know, and, and stores this, this metrics data as time series. And then uh, it also it makes it available for an alert manager to uh, you know, trigger alerts and notifications to users who are uh, looking at this data and understanding the behavior at any current point in time about their applications and services. 
So um, when we started building Prometheus support in open telemetry earlier this year, um, the objective really was as a fundamental tenet of the commitment that open telemetry has as in um, popular and, and in well-rounded collection uh, uh, agent. Open telemetry is committed uh, to having full support for Prometheus. And we needed to support um, Prometheus um, protocol compatibility. That is that the given that open telemetry actually has a full uh, data protocol to recognize the Prometheus exposition format to interoperate with it. Uh, and similarly have the components that are able to support um, service discovery in a scalable way. So the collector specifically, which is uh, used in conjunction with the APIs and SDKs for collection or by itself dynamically. Um, and this, this particular component uh, should be able to support scalable service discovery, data scraping, um, receiving and exporting Prometheus data and being able to use push and pull uh, mechanisms, exporters to be able to send an, that data to a, any kind of a service backend or the Prometheus server, server itself. And then you have the open telemetry APIs and SDKs, which should be able to ingest and export Prometheus data um, interoperably, um, and then, of course, using OTLP on the uh, internally, but uh, being able to completely support and ingest as well as export Prometheus uh, data formats, right? So you can see on, for example, um, uh, applications that are running in the Kubernetes space or Kubernetes itself with its orchestration and, and different uh, containers. Um, as well as services, which are which could be um, hosted services such as Amazon EKS, um, are emitting metrics all the time, and uh, the collector as well as the open telemetry APIs and SDKs can be used to be able to collect uh, Prometheus data or metrics, being able to receive, use the receiver process in the collector, and being able to write it using a Prometheus remote write exporter do and manage service. In this case, the example is of manage Prometheus from AWS, and then being able to even visualize it with a service such as manage Grafana, which is um, um, a visualization platform commonly used in, in the Kubernetes uh, space. So you can see that you know, a whole pipeline requires that end-to-end -end Prometheus support especially when mm, users are using metrics for observability. Um, so the, these are the requirements that we needed to support and we needed to figure out you know, how to make sure that the data protocol and the components were all uh, being able to not only consume this data, but also be able to process it and then send it to uh, the uh, data sync of choice. So uh, this involved, you know, supporting um, and making changes, first of all, to the data model. And um, this um, meant that all the Prometheus metrics data types, including counter, gauge, summary, histogram, uh, should be supported by the metrics data model for, for open telemetry. And um, the second part was uh, taking the Prometheus existing a receiver in the open telemetry collector and being able to act, uh, add and enhance uh, service discovery as well as the scrape configuration support in, in the receiver itself. Um, the operator also we needed to improve and have modified to be able to now handle a diversity of deployments uh, types such as deployment, daemon set and stateful set support uh, to be able to then uh, trigger any collector, you know, using the open telemetry operator and with a CRD and, and be able to uh, run multiple instances. Uh, similarly, modifying and enhancing the exporter that exists for the, specifically the Prometheus remote write exporter to be able to handle, um, you know, finer details of the Prometheus um, process processing uh, using stale markers, NANs, and others. 
other uh, specifics that are required for uh, how Prometheus server, you know, it, can, it requires the data to be uh, ingested. And then you have, of course, compliance tests to verify that the Prometheus uh, remote write exporter uh, is fully compliant in, in the data that it is emitting, passing all the tests that have been defined by the uh, Prometheus project, as well as um, an area that we are working on right now is extending the Prometheus receiver compliance tests so that those are also available for being able to uh, ensure that what the Prometheus receiver in the open telemetry collector is consuming is uh, fully compatible with um, uh, the Prometheus protocol. The other part, which was uh, which has been really cool in working uh, towards adding interoperability support in open telemetry for Prometheus, has been working with the Prometheus community and uh, closely and facilitating enhancements in Prometheus, such as adding HTTPS uh, support that have that rolled out in um, 2.29 of Prometheus uh, version as well as uh, defining remote write uh, compliance tests, compatibility tests, and helping also define some of the receiver compliance tests. So again, a lot of collaboration here uh, and a lot of um, you know, really cool um, improvements on the open telemetry side to reinforce full support for Prometheus. So some of the wins that have been uh, uh, very, very, Mm, uh, you know, exciting on the open telemetry side have been successful coordination, working with talented engineers across, you know, both projects, open telemetry as well as Prometheus to discuss and solve some of the technical challenges. You know, sometimes um, um, a single engineer may not know all the moving parts of these complex uh, open source projects. And so learning we have had over, you know, working on this interoperability um, requirement over the last few months has been that every org has limited resources, right? And, and, and combining these resources really leads to the creating a larger whole uh, which is essential to collaborating as successfully and, and uh, bringing in and creating results. Um, and, and we have been, you know, very successful uh, in, in being able to build out the support in a very clear, clear way on both the protocol, the data specification, as well as the implementation on the open telemetry side to ensure Prometheus uh, is fully supported. Similarly, uh, some of the challenges have been that the, you know, there was a bunch of code that was inherited from open census in the open telemetry collector. And as we looked at it and we worked through it, it really required uh, some rewrite and um, really iterating through that uh, slowed us down a fair bit because you know there were a lot of assumptions that were made in open census uh, which necessarily you know have don't apply anymore or have changed uh, and and the assumptions in the open telemetry project are different uh, they're extended they're more scalable you know so uh, taking those requirements into consideration has been very important um, similarly, one of the other challenges that we have, you know, ran into and have been uh, working through has been that there's never enough resources, right? Even on open source projects, you know, we are completely a contributing, uh, contributor driven uh, work and, and there is no, not enough resources in any particular contributors. So we had to effectively figure out, you know, how to get so many different players to collaborate productively. I mean, how do you, you know, bring everybody together and, and, and uh, you know, ensure that interoperability support is built? So that has required leadership, mentoring, steady communication uh, on the projects, as well as, you know, with key, it has been very key and instrumental in producing the collaboration and results that we have had. And, and uh, huge thanks to the Prometheus and Open Telemetry contributors who have participated in this whole process of, and, and work is still in progress. It's uh, something that, you know, as we are doing 
uh, we're looking at requirements design, uh, discussing, um, you know, what's the best design and then implementation and testing. And that whole life cycle takes a lot of, uh, you know, coordination, reviews, code reviews, design reviews, uh, discussions from all the contributors. So huge thanks to them. Um, the process that we have followed, you know, uh, in, in adding this intro interoperability support, which is something that, you know, at an open source uh, project scale as large as, as open telemetry is, is something that really works, is, has, has been having effective work groups and, and being able to have a weekly discussion. Um, open telemetry has some excellent uh, SIGs where you know maintainers and contributors come and discuss different areas they're working in or different uh, questions they have uh, and what are some of the architectural design decisions that are taken. So the work group that we created for weekly uh, Prometheus specific discussions uh, has been really very useful and very uh, instrumental in making, uh, taking decisions uh, with, you know, engineer experts coming in from different uh, companies, different projects, you know, discussing um, these uh, issues together and figuring out um, what is the best solution for a particular implementation. Similarly, maintaining a very transparent and up-to-date backlog has really helped us in tracking enhancements and changes to the protocol, the code itself for the collector, as well as APIs and SDKs, and as well as the technical documentation, um, including providing more clarity on use cases, um, which is always you know, a very uh, tough area for projects to collect. But on the other hand, open telemetry you know, has really had the benefit of having a huge number of different users, um, you know, both developers and end users coming and discussing the use cases, which has been very helpful for us in identifying what are the specific areas we need to enhance technically, you know, in terms of implementation first and prioritize that. And, and the other aspect which has been very useful has been regular communication, as you, as you know, on open source projects, communication is key. Um, and working on such large components which have an industry impact uh, requires regular communication. So open telemetry collector and API SDK groups, uh, which meet in other SIG meetings, we have updated them regularly from the Prometheus web group, making sure that everybody's on the same page as their decisions taken technically, as well as from a design standpoint or a data protocol standpoint so that all changes are not duplicative or repetitive, right? So again, communication is key there. Um, the commitment also from the open telemetry collector approvers and maintainers to ensure that code reviews and uh, design reviews are done uh, regularly and uh, you know, keeping Prometheus support as has first class uh, interoperability on the project has been very instrumental in making sure that we've made good progress so far. Um, that said, work is still in progress and we are tracking the backlog at um, the Prometheus work group uh, on open telemetry. You can go check it out anytime to see you know, what the project group uh, is working on. And um, you can track the issues right here on the work group. Uh, there also are, you know, we track and triage the backlog regularly. So again, there's some, some element of project management here, which is very essential in making sure that uh, across, you know, multiple components, uh, the same, uh, you know, functionality and feature set is being supported and the same, uh, you know, requirements are very clearly stated. So please go and check it out. Um, but this leads again back to, you know, what are we trying to achieve here? And building Prometheus uh, interoperability support has been very key in being able to drive um, and, and build out metric support uh, for open source observability on open telemetry. And um, the status of the project in terms of moving tracing stability, metric stability, and log stability is uh, work in progress. We maintain that very regularly on open telemetry IO slash status. Um, from a metric standpoint, again, 
Um, the open telemetry protocol is now stable as of April 2021. The data model is also now stable with uh, as of July 2021. And uh, work on the Prometheus support uh, is still work in progress uh, with some more enhancements that need to be made um, in the collector. So that work is in progress as well as the APIs and SDKs, the metric support uh, you know, being built out um, as well as um, full interoperability with Prometheus, uh, both for push and pull mechanisms is work in progress. So that's supposed to be landing in, in November. Hopefully, you know, if we can actually gather up some speed, maybe <laughs> beginning of November or end of October. But uh, at this time, again, you know, there's lots of work on the project. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, areas that we need more contributors on. So again, if you're super interested in open source observability or in, um, or you understand, you know, from as an end user or a developer who's worked on Prometheus or on open telemetry before, please come join us, uh, help us, you know, build uh, some of these components as well as code review, um, super valuable to have um, expertise being shared across all of us to really build out a stable and steady uh, support for not only Prometheus, but metrics uh, in overall. So thanks for listening. And I really appreciate the time um, uh, from all of you for you know, this update on what progress we have made on in Prometheus support. Uh, the future is bright. We are actually looking forward to having full support and continuing to maintain that for the two projects to work closely together and also uh, building out end-to-end -end, uh, protocol support so that um, any large um, scale implementations of telemetry and, and ingestion as well as export of uh, the petabytes of data coming in for observability uh, is fully operable and usable on the open telemetry side. So uh, thank you again uh, and have a great day.